Construction. You are a teacher in Pasco, Washington, it says, uh -huh. teaching for 20 years, and you've slowly seen the takeover of our schools. Besides teaching, she coordinates a Facebook group to open schools, uniting our community, and are the coordinator for the Ignite School Choice. Building leaders through her drama is her passion. I'll just hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. Well, hello, my name is... My name is Tara Childs and I'm a mom, teacher, citizen, and now I'm an activist. Never in all my dreams did I imagine standing on street corners, holding signs, fighting for kids to go to school and for businesses simply to be open. This is not okay. Everyone say, this is not okay. This is not okay. I want a governor, not a dictator. About nine months ago, things just didn't seem right. Besides teaching library, where I teach about 800 kids and doing plays with kids at school, where I build leaders and I get to watch them bloom like flowers, the government put a halt to all that and said I wasn't essential anymore. Everyone say, I am essential. I am essential. We all are essential. My students are essential. You are essential. And we deserve to be able to work and grow as humans. The governor took that away from us and kept kids from going to school and letting them grow as people, hurting their parents, their incomes, and our businesses as well. Um, I'm not the same as I was nine months ago. I've changed. And Eleanor Roosevelt said, when you cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. I choose to live. Raise your hand if you also want to live. Now she went on to say that women are a little bit like tea. You don't know how strong they are until they get really, really hot. Well, I am strong and I have learned that I can do hard stuff. Everyone say, I can do hard stuff too. I can do hard stuff too. It's not going to happen overnight, but we will create change. What has happened to America did not happen overnight. So when I saw the tyranny came coming, I made a connection to when I visited my students in China. So I wake up every morning at about 3 a.m. and teach kids in China. Then I do my regular job. When I went to China, I got to live in households with other families that I taught. And it really opened my eyes to what was going on. I'd always wondered, why are my Chinese students wearing winter coats? Well, they're wearing winter coats because their heat is managed by the government. It's communist. 62 degrees is as warm as their house can get. Then I learned that they can only drive cars on certain days. Do you guys want that? No. So my friends had to pick me up in a neighbor's car because they weren't allowed to drive. In Shanghai, you can only drive if you're very wealthy because you have to pay a lot of money to drive in the city. This is not okay, and I don't want that for America. People are invisible in China. They are silenced, they are oppressed, and they are divided. And this is what Governor Jay Inslee has done to us, and it is not okay. Everyone say, I want a governor, not a dictator. I the last straw before I left from China, I went to Guangzhou and the friends told me we just have been learning how to free think. And I'm like, what do they mean they're just learning to free think? Well, you know what? Now I know. Right after he said that, a couple months later, suddenly they were divided, conquered, and censored again and squashed so they could not have individual individuality anymore. They turned into sheep just like we are turning into sheep in America. Well, back to why I'm here is I don't want that for my life. I don't want that for my children, and I don't want that for my children's children. In America, my kids, students haven't been able to go to school. I teach them online, and this is not okay. Special needs children are just plopped right in front of a computer, given maybe 30 minutes of instruction a day. Kids that need teachers to help teach them are not being taught. Parents are being divided where they have to raise money, plus teach their kids. It is not okay. But to be honest, our system was broken anyways, and we need it better than it was. Everyone say, I'm part of the solution. I'm part of the solution. Students are disengaged. CDC, who I don't believe much anyway, say about 240,000 children are not engaged in their learning. I see that online as they, sleep look they sit looking sleepy or they don't show up. Usually in my Zooms, I have about 60 to 70 kids. They don't always show up because they're tired and this is getting old. It is not okay. In addition, kids are struggling. They're not allowed to do their sports anymore or their art or their drama. Doing drama in my classroom and library makes kids bloom and they become the leaders they never thought they could be. One time I had a student say to the sixth graders who are cooler than I, he said, 
in his six-year-old little voice. After doing a play and speaking in front of 600 kids, I could speak in front of thousands. We are taking away their ability to grow and it's not okay. Everyone say, I want a governor. I want a governor. Not a dictator. Kids have been killing themselves. Who knows the exact data, but my research says that about 200 more people in the teenage to young adult range have committed suicide, and that is not all right. Our schools are ignoring mental health, yet wanting to slide in inappropriate sex ed. This is not okay. Teachers are making ch choices to groom children, and as my friend Sarah Hale said from the 1800s, she said, the teacher is second to the mother and people believe what teachers say they're the perfect people to groom kids for socialism and it's not okay yep. today kids are going to school and the nurse is saying good job putting your mask on just right well done that is not a good job a good job is when you choose to be brave a good job is when you choose to lead a good job is when you choose to be your best yeah. grooming our children is not okay Sarah Hales it's kind of funny. She actually made it so Thanksgiving would be a universal holiday. Sarah Hales in the 1800 had a divided world, and she wanted people to unify on Thanksgiving and be family. She also wanted schools for girls, and she wanted playgrounds for leisure, and she wanted uh, no slavery. She was an activist, and she had obstacles just like us, and today our obstacles are endlessly and complacent people, and it's not okay. One thing she said was, that um, when you don't let people do things, you pervert them. And Inslee's perverted schools. He's perverted having a smile. He's perverted having family dinners. And this is not okay. So to sum it up, I got volunteered to be in charge of school choice with Ignite Foundation with Michelle because the people who had that idea wouldn't show up. Well, I choose to contribute and I choose to live. Every day I'm more part of this school choice. I know how much more important it is. I want kids to be able to go out into the real world and live it in school. We make them stay in a little classroom and that's not okay. I want them to make connections. I see as a teacher, I would love to teach an esteemed school where kids are doing science, technology, engineering, art, and math. I want a school where parents are part of it. School choice is the answer for our kids and their kids to come. And it is our one thing that we can do to stop tyranny from taking over our schools again. So basically, I want to leave you with this. A people that values its privileges above its principles will soon lose both. We must take control of our lives, and the answer is right here at our footsteps. We have the power. Everyone say, I want a governor. I want a governor. Not a dictator. Not a dictator. Well, thank you for letting me speak today.